Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Kelsey and today I'm going to show you how to make this cute little tassel cowl. Um, I posted this on my Instagram and my TikTok. A lot of people were interested in the pattern so I went ahead and made a tutorial for you guys really quick. Um, I hope you like it and let's get started. So for this tutorial today I am using Scarfy um, from Lion Brand Company. This is a size 5 bulky weight yarn. You can use any size 5 weight yarn. You can also size up if you want your um, cowl to be a little bit more chunky. But this is what I'm using today. This color is called Coral Cream. I think it's really pretty. I'm also going to be using a 6.5 millimeter hook. I have a tapestry needle and some scissors. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a slip knot. I'm going to put it on my hook. I'm going to chain 75. This is going to be the length that goes around your neck. You can make this longer or shorter, just make sure it's divisible by three. Alright, so I have did my chain of 75. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure all of my chain is facing the same way. And I'm going to bring the end to the beginning and we're going to do a slip stitch to connect it in the round. So just in my first chain here, I'm going to go through, do a slip stitch through both. And then at this point, we're actually going to be crocheting into the back humps of our um, chains. So we're going to be going through these ones right here and we're going to start in the beginning so I'm just going to turn it and we should start right here and we're going to start going all the way around and you should actually end with 74 single crochets or just one less than your initial chain if you did not do 75. So after you have done your 74 stitches, if you have 74, um, once again make sure that your row is not twisted at all. And then we're just going to put a slip stitch back into our first single crochet here to complete the round. And then later I'll come back with our yarn needle and we'll weave in this end, but we're just going to continue from here. I'm going to chain three. That's going to count as a double crochet. And I'm going to put two more double crochets in the same stitch. So right here, that's one. And then I'll put a second one in there. So with the chain three and the two double crochets, that is one granny cluster. I'm going to skip two single crochets. In the third one here, I'm going to do three double crochets. That's one two and three and then that is pretty much just going to repeat all the way around we're going to skip two single crochets in the third one we're going to do three double crochets and whenever you go all the way back around you should end you should have two single crochets left and we'll connect the round Okay, so I'm back at the end. I actually have one um, single crochet left, but that's okay. It really doesn't make a big difference. I'm actually going to slip stitch into the top of our chain three that we did at the beginning. And here is what it should look like so far. To start on the next row, we're going to chain three. 
And then in that same space, we're gonna put our two double crochets. And then we'll move on to the next space, which is right here. We're gonna do three double crochets again. And we're just gonna do that all the way around. In every space, we're gonna do three double crochets. Okay, so I just did my last cluster here and I'm going to finish off the row by single, um, sorry, slip stitching into my chain three in the beginning cluster. So from there we have two rows of the granny stitch. I'm actually just going to repeat our last row seven more times so that I have a total of nine rows. Um, you can repeat it as many times as you like for um, the length that you want, but for me and my pattern, I usually just do nine rows. So I'm gonna go do that and then I'll come back and we'll start making the point. Okay, so I just finished my nine rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For me, this turned out to be about six inches long. If you want it to be longer, you can make it longer, add more rows. You can really do whatever you want here. So for my next row, I'm going to chain two, and that's gonna count as a um, double crochet, but we're actually gonna go on over to our next space right here, and I'm gonna do my cluster of three. Right, so we have our chain two and then our first cluster of three. I'm gonna continue with my clusters until I have um, nine in total. So we have the chain two, and then we have nine clusters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For the 10th one, we're actually going to be making a corner, just like you would on a granny square. So I'm gonna yarn over, do three double crochets like we normally would for a cluster. But now I'm going to chain two, and I'm gonna put another cluster in the same spot. So I'm gonna put three more double crochets. Right, and then we have a corner there. And then on the other side, we wanna put nine more clusters just so that it matches up. So we'll just continue. Okay, so that should be it, but before I move on, I always count them and make sure that they're even on both sides. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then I have a corner piece, and on the other side, I should have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So after our ninth cluster, we're going to yarn over and we're gonna put a double crochet into the next space. And that matches up exactly with the chain two that we started with over here. So this is about how much room you should have left. This is gonna be at the back of our neck and at this point it's just going to travel down so that it gets bigger on the front of our body and it stays shorter for the around the back of our neck area. So next I'm gonna turn my work Start my next row by chaining two. And then I'm going to put three double crochets in the next open space. Just like that. And then we'll just continue with that all the way until we get to our corner.
Once we get to our corner spot, we're just gonna do another corner. So I'm gonna go into the space. I'm gonna put three double crochets in a cluster. After that, I'm going to chain two and put three more double crochets in that same chain two spot from before. Just like that. And then I'll continue with my clusters down the other side until we get to the end of the row. Okay, so this is my last space here. I'm gonna finish my cluster and then I'll show you how to turn the row. So this is our initial chain two and then where we started our uh, first row. I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna put one double crochet into this space right here. And then that just continues the diagonal. We'll turn our work. And we'll do the same thing that we did on the other side. So we're gonna chain up two, go to our next space, and we'll start our clusters over again. So right now we're on row three. I'm gonna do this for probably about six rows. You can make it as long or as short as you want. I usually like to try mine on a couple times, you know? But um, so I'm on row three, like I said, I'm going to continue until I hit row six and then I'll come back and talk about the rest. Okay, so I just did my six rows. Here's what it looks like in the front. Here's what it looks like in the back. And <laughs> here is what it would look like from the side. So I did one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I just ended with um, my wrong side out because I did six rows. That doesn't really matter because we're gonna be doing a border. So technically I ended right here. So I'm gonna chain one and I'm gonna turn my work. And I'm just going to do a row of single crochets all the way around the edge of my work. So I'm gonna do a single crochet in every double crochet stitch. Once I get to the chain two space, which is right here, I'm actually gonna put three single crochets in that space. So that's one, that's two, and that is three. We're gonna do that again when we come back. So if you wanna mark your middle crochet right now, I would suggest you do that. I'm not going to just because I will know when I get back to it. But I'm gonna continue down the other side. All right, so I'm coming to the part now where we have our double crochets and our chain two spots. So I'm going to single crochet in my last double crochet. And I'm gonna put one single crochet in the space. Next, I'm gonna put one in the corner here that matches up with my cluster, so right there. I'm gonna put one in the next chain space. I'm gonna put one in this corner here. Just find a good spot. And then one in the space. One in the next corner. One in the next chain space. Corner. Space. Corner. And then this will be my last space. So I'll do it here in my last space. And then I will just start in my next cluster, which will be right here. And then I'll continue around the back. 
and that should connect all of that really nicely. So I'm just coming to the other side. I'm gonna put my last single crochet and my last double crochet. And then we'll start in the chain space. One in the corner. One in the 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 space, one in the corner, and then lastly, you should do one in the last space. And then you're gonna connect your round. because so we got back to where we started our single crochet, so I'm gonna go through my first single crochet. I'll do a slip stitch. From here, after I've connected my round of single crochets, I'm gonna be doing some rows of half double crochets, and I'm actually going to turn my work in between every row. So after I slip stitch that together and tightened it up, I'm going to chain one. I'm going to turn my work. And I'm going to start doing half double crochets. So this one right here is my first single. I'm going to yarn over, go through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three, and that'll be a half double crochet. And I'm just going to do one half double crochet in every single stitch around. Um, obviously except for my corner and I'll show you what to do when we get there. All right, so here I am coming up on my corner. You may have your middle single crochet marked. You may have not. Mine is not marked, but I can tell which one it is. So these three are the ones that I put in the chain two space. I'm just gonna do one in the first one. In my center single crochet, I'm gonna do three half doubles. So that's one, that's two, and that's three, all in the same spot. And then we will just continue on. And if you want, you can move your marker up to the middle stitch because that is where we're gonna do the three together in the next row. All right, here is the last stitch in my row. So I'm gonna do my half double crochet there. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the top of my first half double that I did. And from here, I'm gonna chain one, turn my work, and then I'll start doing my next row of half double crochets. So for me personally, in this pattern, I like to do about six rows of half double crochets. Obviously, you can do as many rows as you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and go do those six rows. Um, I definitely recommend you do an even number of rows because then you end with the right side of your stitches facing outward. So you can do two, four, six, or eight, 10, you know, whatever, but I'm gonna do six, and then I'll come back and we will finish off the uh, cowl with a nice tassel on the end. All right, so there's my last row of half double crochets out of my six rows. I'm not gonna do a slip stitch. I'm actually going to get my scissors and cut off my yarn. Give you a good amount to weave in. And I'm going to pull it out with my hook. I'm gonna put the yarn on my yarn needle. And then 
from here, we're going to take this yarn and we're going to put it under both loops of our first half double crochet of the row. Pull it through and then we're going to go straight down this loop here. And what that does is it creates a loop and it connects your round seamlessly. And then at this point I just run my um, yarn down on the inside a couple rows and then I also like to split the yarn and uh, take the two pieces and tie them together just to give it some extra security. So I'll show you guys how I do that. Okay, so I weaved it all the way down here. Now I'll just like untwist the yarn, just the opposite way that the yarn is usually twisted. And I'll take my sewing needle and I'll like put it up through the middle somewhere, right here to split it in half. And I'll take one half, thread it through my needle and then loop that under some yarn right back up to the same spot. And after I've done that, I take my two pieces and I tie them together. With this yarn, you have to be a little bit gentle on the first few knots because if you pull this too hard, it will rip. But once you get to about the third knot, you can start pulling hard and then that sets it in place pretty well for me at least and that's on the inside so doesn't really matter at this point I also like to weave in the top of my work where we started so I'll go ahead and do that really quick so that is done you can finish it here if you want but this is what it looks like. I'm going to finish it off with a nice little tassel hanging off the end, so we'll do that really quick. To make my tassel, I'm gonna be using a tassel maker. Um, this is Boy brand. I don't remember where I got it, probably Michael's or Joann's, but um, you don't have to have one of these. You can make a tassel with pretty much anything. You can just use like a piece of cardboard and that will work absolutely fine. Um, I am setting it to five inches, just like just under five inches. But so if you don't have one of these, I would use a piece of cardboard that is like five inches long about. So we're gonna take our yarn and start wrapping it around this. So just wrap it until you have a, a good amount, um, as much as you, as big as you want the tassel to be, and then you can cut your yarn off. I'll set this aside. I'm gonna cut off a good piece of yarn, you know, 12 inches or so. I'm gonna put it through my needle. We're gonna pick up one half and just slip it under there and then I'll even it out on the top just make sure it's the same distance on both sides and then we're gonna tie this in a knot and try to tie it as tight as you can the goal is to bring all the top together so after I have the one knot Try to hold it pretty tight and then I tie a second knot. So anyway, that's what it's gonna look like. At this point, I guess you can just take this off of here. Make sure you keep it nice and neat. 
then we're gonna need another piece of yarn pretty long as well and I'm going to lay this out and I'm gonna put my yarn on top of it with about one inch on the top because this this area will be our little ball but then I'll take that yarn piece Tie that in a really good knot. And then whenever you go to um, weave in these little ends. What I like to do is I like to take one of them, hold it up with the tie pieces. I take the other one and I wrap it starting at the bottom, closer to the bottom and then move it upwards as you can see, if you can see. just like two or three times. And then once it gets back to the same spot where I had put the other one, I'm gonna tie it in a knot again. Tie it in two knots. After I do that, I'm gonna put them on my yarn needle We're gonna go through the top or we're gonna go under where we had just wrapped all the yarn. And if you give them a nice little tug, it pulls the knot where, they, where I just tied them together under the wrapping so that it looks all nice and seamless. So I'll just do the other one really quick, the same thing. Put my yarn through the needle run it through the top and under where we wrapped, pull it through, give it a nice little tug and it will bring that knot down under the wrap. So if you go all the way around now, you should just be able to see the yarn wrap, no knots. And last but not least, we need to uh, cut open all the yarn loops at the bottom so I just put my scissors in there. Make sure you get all of them. And you know, that looks fine to me. If you want, you can trim the bottom, make it exactly all even, stuff like that. But from here, you should just have two yarns coming off the top where we tied the first knot. All of these should be down and even, and you should have a nice little tassel. So to put it on the end of our cowl, pretty easy gonna take one of the strings, put it on my yarn needle, I'm gonna go up through the middle here, and I'm gonna go under where we had tied the knot in the first place. So it loops under and I'm gonna go back up through, tighten that down. I'll do that a couple times probably and I'll go through different spots just to make it more secure. But 
there's that. And I'm gonna weave this up just a little bit. Just to there is fine. Then I'm gonna do the same thing with my other piece of yarn. Enough. So I'm going to weave this piece of yarn up to meet with the other piece of yarn and then I'll just tie those two together, get them out of the way. There we go, so that is the back. This is the front. And that is the end. So here's what it looks like. Laying flat. Here's what it should look like on the back. Anyway, I hope you guys really liked this tutorial. Um, if you did, if you make it, um, you can tag me on Instagram. That's going to be linked down below. You can also tag me on um, TikTok. My username is the same on there. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want more videos from me, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Um, thank you guys so much for 60,000 subscribers. That is super awesome. And yeah, I hope I see you soon.